All right, I'm going to share the screen. All right, so uh, I'm Alex Schick. I'm Patrick Sullivan. I'm Megan Sasson. Chad Swick. And uh, we are doing our uh, uh, project on public opinion and the death penalty. So our presentation agenda is here. The, uh, we will start with the introduction, then move into the review of literature, then statement of purpose, research hypotheses, research design, preliminary suspicions and implications, and then we'll end with a conclusion. We decided to conduct our research on the death penalty because we felt it was a polarizing topic and it had a strict divide usually between those who support it and those who wish to abolish it. Um, those opinions are usually lined up with political views, but we were also curious to see if there's any other factors that influence people's decisions and opinions. So our review of literature, what is it? Uh, the review of studies and case done on uh, the topic of research. Uh, politics have been shaping the way we look at death penalty for years now, and opposing parties have always had different opinions on the death penalty, mainly because of values or ethnical viewpoints. And then a study done by Pepperdine University states that for every execution, there were 74 fewer murders the following year. Uh, Pepperdine University found that the death penalty may actually act as a deterrence for using DPIC and FBI record. Oh, they, well, they found it was a deterrence by using DPIC and FBI records from the years 1970 to 2004. Okay, so a statement of purpose. So what we're trying to answer um, at, from this project is what affects people's opinions of the death penalty. And what we're looking for is an answer like age, race, religion, or gender. Um, and we'll be doing a survey for this. So we're gonna ask questions about age, race, religion, and gender. So a question we can ask about age would be obviously how old are you? And then we could ask, uh, what do you think you can tell about a person uh, by how old they are? And then race would be, we could ask a question about uh, what is your race and do you support the Black Lives Matter movement? Then religion, we could ask um, if you're religious, um, what religion are you? Um, do you practice your religion and how often do you practice it? And for gender, we could obviously ask what is their gender and what's their thoughts on uh, gender equality? Um, and then once all these questions are asked and answered, we'll pop the question, do you think, um, do you think, um, any or all of these things um, uh, play a role in their opinion of the death penalty. So we came up with three hypotheses for this uh, project. Uh, the first one is if the death penalty is used in the criminal justice system, then it will be ineffective effective or ineffective and crime will decrease or increase. So to get answers to these questions, we're gonna have to, um, uh, to get answers for this, we're gonna ask questions and look up stuff uh, just to get some uh, information. So uh, our question, questions for this first hypothesis would be, uh, does, the does the use of the death penalty have an effective impact on crime, which would cause crime to decrease? And then two would be, does the use of the death penalty have an ineffective impact on crime, which would cause crime to increase? And then three, what was the rate of crime before the death penalty was introduced uh, in the United States? Uh, what is it now? Um, did crime increase or decrease, and was the uh, the use of the death penalty the cause for the decrease or increase? Um, our second hypothesis would, uh, is the death penalty penalty is handed out and used evenly among all um, all for deterrent all people for deterrence. Um, questions we can ask for this is um, does race play a role in death penalty sentencing, and then two. Um, are certain religions and ethnicities in favor of the death penalty, and do they feel it's handed out fairly? And then our third hypothesis is, the death penalty is dated back to the 18th century and, and written law and can be seen in justice systems around the world. So the questions we can ask for this one is, is the death penalty an outdated use of force and punishment in our justice system? Two, is it still justified to carry out every penalty in our day and age? And three, what are better options we can take in our justice system to not have an implement, to not implement uh, the death penalty um, to certain individuals? So research design. 
Uh, it's semi-structured survey. It's sent out in the winter. A survey is about 10 to 15 minutes to complete on average. Respondents will receive a survey through the mail and then questions dealing with how people feel about the death penalty being used, what types of crimes it should be used for, the death penalty and deterrence, and race, gender, and age, and religion is what's going to be based around a research design. Uh, for sampling, uh, we, we chose to do a random sample and uh, it's a probabilistic sampling. And we chose about 250 participants to be selected. Um, that way we'll give a, a broader scope of the people that will be chosen. So that way we get um, all sides of uh, the spectrum of what people believe in. Uh, measurements of key variables. Um, we'll be looking at people's opinions of the death penalty. Uh, ind uh, independent variables will be religion, age, and race. Uh, dependent variables will be the people's opinion of the death penalty. And uh, controlled variable will be gender. All right, so study limitations. Um, there are many limitations uh, that can arise in our study, along with a lot of strengths. Um, but these are um, some of the limitations we had. Uh, so the first one would be uh, the number of people. If we don't gather enough volunteers, if enough people don't want to participate or we don't get enough participants, then we're not going to be able to complete our study because we have nobody to participate in it. Uh, the time we would give the survey, we decided to give our survey and collect our research um, around the time of an election because we just thought that'd be a better thing because politics, we're kind of working with the criminal justice system. Um, but uh, during election, um, uh, census are heightened and stress is higher. So therefore it might um, affect um, the, our responses from our respondents. And then random selection can be a problem in getting an accurate reading. Um, it's hard to record accurate readings because many people uh, may support the death penalty with uh, the notion that it's a church crime, which it doesn't really do that. And then there's people who are for the death penalty and people that are undecided. So if we randomly select people, we could get a lot more people who are for it than people that are against it. So our readings are gonna be not the best. Um, they won't be uh, fair. So the hope would be to get um, evenly split between people who are for it, people who are against it, and people who are undecided. So some of the strengths of our study, um, it can, that we can come to conclusions using quantitative and qualitative data. Um, by doing this, we can get in detail like responses from people, uh, giving more detail to their answers for complex questions. Uh, this helps us to get many different people from various walks of life. So that way we can assess everybody's different opinions based on their backgrounds. Um, this also allows for multiple methods for gathering data on sensitive subjects. So when we give a more complex question, uh, we can get easier answers or, or more in-depth answers from people really explaining how they feel um, and how this has affected their opinion. And it can also help to revise old data because the overall point of the data being collected is to find out what people think through certain factions of society, um, thus leading us to interpret the results and, and construct an in-depth conclusion. So this would make it more generalizable to the public so that more people could understand, more people um, would be willing to participate, hopefully. And then for our expected results, um, we kind of you found these came up with these conclusions uh, based on just historical data and and things that we found to be even current. Um, but we found that Republicans tend to support the death penalty and Democrats tend to support abolishing the death penalty. Uh, more men are likely to support the death penalty than women. Uh, a lot of times religious people support or they're kind of indifferent or they support the death penalty, but non-religious people are indifferent. 
Um, and then we found out going by race that more white people support the death penalty um, than those of black, Latino, Hispanic, or Asian uh, origin. All right, so in conclusion, we anticipate traditional views of the death penalty to relatively stay the same. Um, our research has shown for the most part that the death penalty has leveled out, um, even mildly been decreasing over recent years. And even when alternative options are given, such as life in prison without parole, um, support goes down even further. Uh, so based on our research, we in the future anticipate that the death penalty will be abolished, um, not anytime soon, but just seeing how the actual carrying out of capital punishments has been decreasing, we do anticipate that it will eventually be abolished. And then we just have our question slide just to end it there. <laughs>